Good day, I am Dr. Matsebola. I am a specialist psychiatrist um, that is currently at Lena Mandla Medical Center. You might wonder what is a specialist psychiatrist and what is the difference between a psychiatrist and a psychologist. Simply put, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor that has specialized in mental illnesses and that basically means when I treat a person, I use a combination of talk therapy um, as well as medication. I work very closely with psychologists and they use primarily talk therapy amongst other forms of therapy as well. Um, you might have noticed some psychologists using the title doctor and that simply is because some of them are able to study all the way through to a PhD and as you know they then get the title um, doctor. So who needs to come see a psychiatrist? People mistakenly think that for you to come see a specialist like me, things must have completely gone off the rails. In other words, you must be talking to yourself or eating out of dustbins or running around on the streets naked or aggress aggressive or violent. And that is not the case. At any point in time when a person realizes that there is now this change or decline in how they ordinarily function, I would say, that would be a good time to see me. So what are these changes that I'm talking about? If you notice that you are angry most of the time or irritable most of the time, or you're feeling sad or you're feeling gloomy and you, you find it difficult to control these feelings, come see a psychiatrist or psychologist. If you notice that your sleep has taken a knock, you can't sleep anymore, or now you sleep too much, and when you wake up in the morning, you're always tired, your appetite has gone down or you're eating more than you normally do or in terms of drinking you've started taking more and more alcohol those tend to be significant warning signs if your memory is not what it used to be if your concentration is not what it used to be if you find yourself having unhealthy thoughts for an example thinking you are worthless you are hopeless your self-esteem goes down and in severe cases, if you notice that you start to think about death, in other words, you're thinking maybe things would be easier if you are not around, please um, see a specialist. Or in some instances, you could notice that you could be just sitting the way I'm sitting now on this couch, and you notice the sense of fear or the sense of worry, and it's uncontrollable, come see me. At any point where you notice some of these changes in or maybe a friend or a family member or a colleague where you notice that this person isn't what they used to be, then it's usually a good idea um, to refer that person to come see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. In terms of the causes of mental illness, there are many things, but to keep it nice and short, Drugs can cause mental illness. Here we're talking about dacha. We're talking about other substances like alcohol. Um, some infections can cause mental illness. Here we're looking at things like syphilis. We're looking at things like HIV, which we know that virus that causes HIV goes straight into the brain. If you've had COVID before, as we've just come out from the pandemic, and you've noticed that you're always lethargic, you're always tired, your brain isn't as sharp as it used to be, then definitely you should see um, a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Trauma as well, that can also cause mental illness. Being exposed to trauma, like being involved in a car accident or a violent robbery, or finding out that a family member or someone that you care about was exposed to trauma, that can also cause mental illness. If a little one is inside the mom's tummy before delivery and during the delivery process itself, something goes wrong and oxygen doesn't go into the baby's brain, that can also cause some challenges as well. In terms of what can a person do to maintain their mental health, there are many small things which we strongly recommend people do, and these relate to people's general health. The first is always ensure that you have a healthy diet. More fruits, more veggies, less salt, less fat. Why is this so important? 
the brain unfortunately has got only two really large blood vessels that supply it and a person that eats these foods that are not healthy is at increased risk of developing diseases like high blood pressure or diabetes or high cholesterol and we do know that these can hurt the brain so that's diet alcohol in moderation cigarettes we do know that tobacco is a big thing now if you don't smoke please don't start if you've already started smoking it would be an excellent idea to go see your doctor and to ask them about things that you can use to get off the cigarettes because we know that cigarettes not only are they addictive but they can cause cancer as well the other thing that's really important is there has to be some form of physical activity unfortunately in this day and age we tend to live very sedentary lifestyles in other words you're sitting in your car at work most likely you're sitting down when you're eating you're sitting down when you get home you're sitting down again and the body was not designed for that so there should be some form of physical activity what physical activity you might ask doing chores around the house is absolutely fine taking walks around your neighborhood that is absolutely fine jogging that is fine if you can go to the gym even better if you are worried about your safety when you're taking walks around your neighborhood an excellent idea would be to meet up with one or two other people and to form a walking club and that speaks to the next point about how to prevent mental illness um, there must be some form of social interaction human beings were not designed to be in isolation unfortunately we do know that when people become isolated unfortunately the risks of developing mental illness those ones also go up another really important thing is to do what are called wellness visits to your doctor or to your nurse practitioner don't wait until well you can go there for regular checkups especially if you are now at the age of 40 and above it's a really good idea to have at least one or two checkups a year with your doctor that way we can make sure that your general state of health is okay and if you should have been diagnosed with diseases um, that need you to take medication on a daily basis please um, take those medications if those medicines are not treating you well please speak to your clinician and tell them that doc you gave me this this is what i'm noticing is it normal and and your doctor is going to help you the other thing is sleep. It's absolutely essential that we get enough sleep. In the society that we live in now, we are always told that, you know, you can function on four hours of sleep. In some cases, it's three hours of sleep. Please ignore that. It is absolutely essential that we, go, we get quality, good sleep on most nights. How do you know that you're getting quality sleep? When you wake up in the morning, you should feel refreshed. You should feel ready to attack the day. Yes, there might be still a bit of sleep that's there. You might want to, you know, turn over and sleep some more, but you should be able to, to get out of bed. So these are the large um, groups which we really recommend that people, people follow. And then lastly, and most importantly, in this society that we live in now unfortunately it's become extremely individualized which means we no longer interact with people at the same frequency that we used to um, many years ago and you know we do recommend that people do speak out do reach out if a person notices that there are changes that are happening to them or to someone that they know they definitely should speak out and to the rest of us that are listening to this person that is speaking, we must listen to them with a sympathetic ear. And then after we've been listening to them, we must point them out um, in the right direction. And that is um, towards a healthcare provider. And then lastly, and most importantly, um, society does have certain beliefs that certain groups of people should not speak out. And this relates more to men we do see higher numbers of suicide in men we do see higher numbers of depression and anxiety in men simply because men have been conditioned by themselves and society that a man does not speak out a man is a human being 
a man is equally susceptible to stress and trauma and anxiety and men should be able to speak out we would recommend that you find someone that you trust that you can speak to or you should go see your clinician thank you